Hi, welcome to the next video lecture in Introduction to Machine Learning. Um, so we've just um, introduced classification and regression trees um, and uh, how they look internally, their structure. Um, so um, we've uh, learned that they basically define a step function over the feature space. So think about a two-dimensional step function that means it's defined over rectangles or like for this classification tree where we have these two features um, or if you think about a regression tree for just one feature then we end up with a step function like this from the splits in the tree right remember every node in the tree just spits out a constant prediction for all the observations that end up in this node based on the splits that the tree defines. Um, so the question is, how do you actually build that tree? Like how do you learn the best possible structure of that tree um, to do it? And the answer is, as always, <laughs> almost always, we do this uh, by empirical risk minimization. Yeah? That's how we find how to define these splits. So which variable, which value of that variable or of that feature to use to define such a split. Yeah. Okay, so empirical risk minimization. That's what that's how we do it. That's the answer. Um, okay, what does that look like specifically? Let's uh, do some math. So we have our data set D and let's call the subset of our data that is assigned to some node, which we are looking to further subdivide. Um, let's call a subset of the data that is in, in that node, let's call that N. Yeah, so this is the data that is in some, well, currently terminal node um, of a tree. Yeah, so lowest level of the tree. And now we want to see um, how to split up the data that is part of this node and um, how to split that up further. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> before we do that, let's think about what happens to the data that is in that node. Yeah? Um, all the data in the node N um, gets the same predicted value. So our prediction um, Y hat, yeah? our model prediction for the target feature, that is just some constant C for all observations. Oops, sorry for all observations in this node. Yeah. Well, and then the risk for um, a leaf for that node, for, that, for the data in that node, is simply the average of the loss for the data in that node. Yeah? So we sum up over all the observations that are in that node, and we compute the loss function, so the difference in some fashion, between the actual observed target value and the value that our tree predicts for data in that node. So this constant C. Yeah? And we divide that, uh, we take the average. So we divide that by the number of data points in that node. Yeah? Um, okay, and the optimal thing that we can do in terms of minimizing the risk is simply find a constant C. Well, that minimizes this empirical risk. Yeah, so it's a fairly simple optimization problem, just looking for the value C that minimizes this risk. Um, all right. This is how we quantify how well a given split works. Now that we know how to quantify how well a given split performs, we can turn that into a rule of how to find the best possible split point. Yeah, so um, let's say again, we have a, a node N, and now we want to split this, subdivide it into the left and the right child node. Yeah, so we're calling these um, N1 and N2. And the data that goes into N1 is all the data that was in the parent node N, for which the jth feature takes on a value below some threshold or some split point t. Yeah. 
So we're looking, so, so, so the problem that we have to solve is, well, we look for the best feature, x, j, and the best threshold. Yeah? Um, if this condition is true, then all the observations go into the left child node and one, and if this condition and if the condition this condition is false, so that condition here is true, then all the observations go into the right child node. Um, there are many many different ways that we could do this. So um, how we evaluate the split is as follows. Well, we are computing the risk in node n for a split at feature j at the threshold t. Yeah? So n1 is defined like this, n2 is defined like this. And now um, we do empirical risk minimization in node 1 and node 2, or the left child node and the right child node, to figure out the constant c1 that minimizes the empirical loss in the left child node and the constant C2 that minimizes the loss in the right child node. Well, and then again, we take the average. Yeah? And finding the best way to split a parent node into two child nodes just means that you're looking over all the features xj and over all possible split points t for that specific feature to find the one way to split up n into two child nodes that gives you the lowest empirical risk in the two new child nodes. Mm -hmm. um, so, depends on what your concrete setting is, how this empirical risk of a node looks like. Yeah, so we can use... Okay, so, sorry. Um, so, let's, let's rewind. So, this is basically the optimization part of tree building. Yeah, there's a little bit more to it, and we'll talk about that in the next video, but this is basically empirical risk minimization applied to the question, okay, well, how do I subdivide my data into two subpopulations which are as homogeneous as possible, yeah, so that a constant prediction uh, gives us gives me the lowest risk. And now we have to talk about okay, well, what kind of loss functions can we use? And the answer is well, you can use any loss function to build a tree. For regression trees, you would typically use the L2 loss, so squared errors. Um, and if you're using um, squared errors, then the best prediction that you can make um, is the average of all the observations in your <clears throat> in your leaf. Yeah, so there we have a very simple analytic solution. If we would use the L1 loss, then the best constant prediction would be the median, for example. Yeah? Um, okay, so another way to look at this is um, because the mean is also the value that minimizes the quadratic um, deviations from it. Yeah, that's the definition. That's the, that's why that's why for under L two loss we are issuing a prediction that's equivalent to the um, arithmetic mean because this minimizes that value here. Yeah, the sum of squared errors. And obviously, if you um, put in y bar here, so you're putting in the mean of the target variable, then this expression, this risk associated with that node, is nothing else than just the variance of your target feature in that node. Okay, so essentially what you're doing here is you're trying to find splits so that the variance of the target distribution in the child nodes is as small as possible. Yeah? Um, so, for example, yeah, if we have data like that, um, this is our feature xj, this is the current uh, best prediction that we are making, the mean of our data set, 
And now we start looking for thresholds at which to split the data according to xj. So then the best threshold here would be this value, t, and then we get new nodes and one and then two with this part of the data and this part of the data. And the new predictions in n1 and n2 will be the arithmetic means in each of these nodes and they will specifically minimize the variance yeah, in these two child nodes. So another way to think about building trees is that you measure basically the variability or impurity of the target distribution in a node and you try to make it as small as possible. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> For classification, a similar reasoning applies. You want to make, you want to create splits um, that are as pure in terms of their categories as possible. Um, different ways to formalize this, you can either use a Breyer score, so basically taking the square difference between an indicator function of the actual observed class and the probability that your tree predicted for that class or Bernoulli loss, um, like a logistic loss function. Um, anything you want to use for classification, you can. Typically, it's either Breyer score or um, Bernoulli loss. And the predictions of your tree for a classification problem are very simply the relative frequencies of um, <clears throat> of the labels and these are basically the optimal predictions under both these logistic uh, or Bernoulli loss functions and the prior loss function. Um, now this way of introducing um, split criteria computation um, in trees is fairly unconventional. Most books about trees always talk about the impurity reduction. Yeah? So they're not talking about building a tree in terms of empirical risk minimization. They're talking about building trees in terms of minimizing the impurity of the target distribution in each of the nodes. But we've seen that this is the same thing. Yeah? So this is just a different way to, to look at it. Um, explicitly, because if you think about a regression tree under squared error loss, then the impurity of the node, okay, that's the variance of your target in that node, but minimizing this variance impurity is specifically the same as minimizing the squared error loss function by some predicted constant in the tree. Yeah, so they're equivalent perspectives on the same thing. We teach you the empirical risk minimization perspective because we think that's a more general perspective and well, it's easier to see how this relates to other parts of machine learning if you don't have to uh, learn all this new vocabulary about impurity reduction. All right. Um, how does this... Um, how, how does this work uh, more concretely? Well, minimizing the Breyer score, that is equivalent to minimizing the Gini impurity. Yeah, so these impurity reduction methods, they also introduce some additional terminology. And minimizing the Bernoulli loss is equivalent to minimizing the entropy impurity, just so you know which options to use if you're building such a card. Um, okay, so we've seen that Actually, these are equivalent and we can understand tree building in terms of empirical risk minimization. Um, now, another thing we have to talk about is misclassification loss. Yeah, we, um, we said that we predict essentially the probabilities of these different subclasses. Why don't we... Um, use the misclassification rate as our criterion to um, <clears throat> build the tree. Um, we could do this here, 
Yeah, because we're looking at the value of um, the loss function directly. But the problem with the misclassification loss, which just counts how often you are wrong, is that it's a fairly coarse instrument. Right? So it doesn't tell you anything about um, how badly you got things right. When, when you, if you predict something with 51% probability and you're wrong, this gets counted as just as bad as if you would predict something with 99% probability and you're wrong. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. Um, and that's the reason why the bias score and the Bernoulli loss are actually preferred because they're more sensitive to well changes in the probabilities that maybe don't change the prediction for that node, but they do change, so to say, the confidence of that prediction. Um, so let's look at that for an example. Um, so say um, we have a two class problems where, where we have 400 observations in each class and we are looking at two possible splits. We want them to, to compare them. So the first split um, works like this. In the first node, we have 300 people of class 0 and 100 people of class 1. And in the second node, we have 100 people of class uh, 0 and 300 people of class 1. In the second split, we have 400 people of class 0 and 200 people of class 1. And in the second node, we have nobody of class 0 and 200 people of class one. So if you look at how many, um, so, so for split one, we would predict class zero in node one and class one in node two, yeah, because these are the majority classes. So in total, we will get a 200 people wrong. Yeah, same thing here for node one, we would predict class zero. So we're getting these 200 people wrong. So in terms of misclassification error, both of these splits are about as good yeah um but if you think about what you want when you build a tree is you want to have as many nodes like this one as possible which are perfectly pure right so there is no error that we're making here on the training data so this is probably split two is probably much preferable because if i'm building a tree i can always you know subdivide this first node further to try to split off these 200 people in class one based on additional information about them other features yeah but at least these 200 people i've classified them already directly correctly yeah and um actually it turns out that in this specific case the Briar loss and the Bernoulli loss both um tell you to use the second split while the misclassification, misclassification error would uh basically say well they're both uh, equally good yeah so um okay you can do the split calculation um look at that um for yourself yeah so um for the genie index um <clears throat> and similarly also for the logistic all right that's it thank you for listening